This is Geometry Unit 4 Quiz 1 Review. We're looking at our diagrams. We notice that the triangle TJM is congruent to triangle PHS. So TJM and PHS. So I recognize that the first letter is congruent to the first letter. So angle T. JM is the last two letters, so HS. When it says equals, that means we're looking for a number. When it's congruent, we're looking for a letter. So the measure of angle M. Well, if S is the same as M, then M is also 48. Angle P. Angle P is the same as angle T, so 73 degrees. MT. MT is the first and last letter. PS is the first and last letter, so that would be 5 centimeters. If you change the order, so now we're going to say HPS, HPS. So we're going to say JTM, triangle JTM. We're going to find the value of X. Well, here we see that the number of tick marks is the same, so E is 70 degrees. B and 60 have the same tick marks. We know that a triangle always adds up to 180. So if we have a triangle, then the sum of the interior angles is 180 degrees. So we're going to say 2x plus 60 plus 70 equals 180. Group our like terms together. Subtract the 130. So when we divide by 2, we get x is 25. And be sure you answer the question, find the value of x. We used an algebraic equation. We're going to use the given information to find the indicated values. We know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. We're supposed to find the values of X and Y. So C and F are congruent. A and D are congruent. Looking at the first letter in your congruence statement. Here's your congruence statement. It lets you know what angles are congruent to each other. So since D is the first letter and A is the first letter, we know that they go together. They're considered corresponding angles. And we divide by 5. And 5 goes into 8 once with 3 left over, so that's 17. X is 17. Now if X is 17, I see that E and B are the same, so this is 42. So 3Y plus 87 plus 42 has to add up to equal 180. So collecting our like terms together, subtract, and 
and we get 51. And it looks very similar here. So 3 goes into 5 once with 2 left over. That's 17 also. In this figure, we have triangle HJK congruent to triangle TRS. Well, we know that T and H are the same. So 6A minus 3 has to equal 51. So A is going to be 9. S is the same as K. And R is the same as J. So let's put the 83 here. So 7B minus 10 plus the 83 plus the 51 has to add up to 180. Because if you have a triangle, then the sum of the interior angles adds up to 180. Then we subtract the 10. Subtract the 126. We get 54. That's what it looks like. Need to look back up here. This is 134, not 136. So when I subtract the 10, I get 124. So when I subtract it, I'm over here at 124 subtracted, which gives me 56. And when you divide by 7, you get a B value to equal 8. Here we're looking for the third congruence. We want to prove that this triangle, they're congruent using SSS. That means we need to have the corresponding sides congruent. So let's start by drawing what the possible triangles could be. Since we have triangle JRM and we have triangle DF. B. They okay, notice none of the letters are the same, so the triangles cannot be touching. JR is supposed to be congruent to DF, so they're both going to get the same number of tick marks. JM is going to have the same number of tick marks as DB. So if I was going to try to have all the corresponding sides congruent, I need the last pair to be congruent. I need segment RM to be congruent to segment FB. Now similarly to that, we'll draw triangles. We'll name these in a different order. J, R, M, and D, B, F. J, R is here. D, F is there. J, M has a different number of tick marks with D, B. Now in this case, we're trying to figure out what missing information do we wish we knew 
so that we could prove it by SAS. Notice how the A is in between the S's. That's called the included angle. So we need the angle that's in between our two sides. So if these are our two sides, we need angle J. And we need angle J to be congruent to angle D. On our next page, we're looking at a proof that's pretty similar to one that we've done in our notes. Before you do any proof, you always want to look at the given information. Notice that point B is supposed to be the midpoint of AE, so identify where segment AE is. Notice that point B is in between those two, and it's supposed to be a midpoint, which tells us that it cuts it exactly in half. Now notice here that they're also telling us that B is the midpoint of CD. So that means we know that B also bisects segment CD. We can't assume that it does unless it told us that. Just because it bisects AE doesn't mean it has to bisect CD. But it did tell us that. So our given information, B is the midpoint of AE alright and then B is also the midpoint of CD I had to decide by the by the numbers that they gave us if I was going to split up my given or if I was going to keep it together. Sometimes we would separate it like we did in our notes. But it is okay to, to group it together. That's all of our given. The next part, what does it mean to be a midpoint? That means that segment AB is going to be congruent to segment EB and also DB is going to be congruent to CB. It hadn't said that yet. So now we officially have our two S's the same. So if midpoint, that's what we had earlier. And then what do we have right now? Then Two congruent segments. Okay, so we're at the point here that we have to decide are we going to try to solve these two triangles congruent by SSS or are we going to try to solve them by SAS? Those are our two options that we have. There is no reason we can come up with why AD is congruent to EC. But I can identify. Can you see why these two angles right around this point B are congruent to each other? We have to use three letters to name it. Okay, those two, sometimes I talk about those as making a bow tie. You look at it like this, it kind of looks like a bow tie. There are two segments that are making a big X. They're called vertical angles. So if vertical angles, we have those, they're in the picture, then... congruent angles. Vertical angles are always congruent to each other. We gotta get real good at recognizing those. Now we have the side, the angle, and the side for one triangle, and the side, the angle, and the side. 
the angle is called the included angle because it's in between those two sides. So our last statement is always what we're trying to prove. And what allows us to say that? What have we accomplished earlier? We got the two S's and the A that's in between. So that's called S-A-S -S congruence. Now we're going to look here at the second proof. Look at your given. AB is congruent to CD. We have those labeled. BC is congruent to AD. We have those labeled. So before we start our proof, we have to come up with a plan. How are we going to prove these two triangles congruent? Do we know that the angle in between them is congruent? So we could use side, angle, side. Or do we know that the third side of each triangle is congruent? Of course, this side is called the reflexive side. It's being shared in both triangles. So I have AB congruent to CD. I have BC congruent to AD. That's my given. That's what we're starting with. So those are my two S's. Now I need to come up with a third bit of information. We talked about how AC going from the one tick side up to the two tick side for that triangle is going to be congruent to that same side, but this time we're going to name it CA because we're going from the one tick side down to the two tick side. We're trying to keep the reflexive property uh, phrased in the same order the triangles go. So that's called the reflexive property of equality. So we can call that POC. And then now, since we have the two sides from the given, plus the extra side, those are three sides that we have shown congruent to each other. Here... Let's make our plan. You got to start out with AB and it's congruent to CB. We also know that D is the midpoint. What does it mean for D to be a midpoint? That's telling us that if D is the midpoint, then it's cutting this segment into two congruent parts. So we're going to start out with segment AB is congruent to segment CB. It's part of our given. And I'm trying to decide here if we're going to split this up. Depend how are we going to use all four? My triangles are going to go here. My other bit of information is going to go here. My new statement is going to go there. So I'm going to put all my given information. D is the midpoint of AC. That was all my given. Now what does it mean for D to be the midpoint? That made these two segments congruent to each other. If 
a midpoint, that's what we had earlier, then two congruent segments. Okay, so far we have this S and we have this S. We need to come up with another piece of information. And that's where DB from the two ticker up to the one ticker and the two ticker up to the one ticker. So we're going to keep those letters in the same order. So that's my third pair of sides congruent. So that's called side, side, side congruence. Okay, on our last page, we're supposed to give a brief description of the differences between side, side, side and side, angle, side. So let's first think this out loud. Side, side, side has all three sides of one triangle congruent to all three sides of a second triangle. Where side, angle, side has two sides of one triangle and the included angle congruent to two sides of another triangle and its included angle. So explain the difference between these different ways to prove triangles congruent and be sure to use words Use corresponding and use the word included because that's an included angle. So, side, 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 which is SSS, requires. three sides of one triangle to be congruent to the corresponding sides of another triangle and side angle side which is SAS requires two sides and the included angle not plural, the included angle of one triangle to be congruent to the corresponding sides and angles of another triangle. Now we need to come down and look to see if these triangles are congruent. We have M, A, E, and T, A, E. Well, we know they have a reflexive side. But if you look here, we don't have all three sides congruent, and we don't know the angle that's in between. These sides. 
So we don't have side angle side and we don't have side side side. So not enough info to prove using SSS or SAS. Here, DKA and SKT. I know that DK is congruent to SK. I know that angle DKA is congruent to angle SKT. I also know that KA is congruent to KT. So we have triangle DKA congruent to triangle SKT by side, angle, side. Number 18, J, R, M, and J, T, M. So we need to look at the information that we know. We know we have 90 degree angles, which makes them perpendicular, makes them right angles. Right angles are congruent, so I know I have these angles the same. I have the reflexive the same, but it doesn't give me any hint that M is the midpoint. I don't know that TM is congruent to RM. It doesn't say it anywhere. So I'm going to say TM congruent and put the not symbol through it to RM. So triangles aren't congruent. Without knowing it, we can't assume it. Here we have triangle ABC and triangle DEF. They both have a two ticker. They both have an angle in between the one tickers. So it looks like side angle side So we could say BA is congruent to ED, and angle A is congruent to angle D. It's okay to use one letter this time because there's only one angle happening at angle A and angle D. And then AC is congruent to DF. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF by side, angle, side. In this case, we have side, angle, side. We have a pair of angles that are the same, but there's no evidence that we have other sides. We don't have angles congruent to another triangle. We don't have sides congruent to another triangle. We have angles, but not sides. Not enough info to prove congruent. On this last one, what do you notice? Do you know any angles that have to be the same measurement? Do you know another pair of sides that have to be the same measurement? This one in the middle, they're both sharing it. So I know that AD is congruent to CB. I know that AB is congruent to CD. And I know that DB of the top triangle is congruent to BD 
going from the one ticker to the two ticker, one ticker to the two ticker, B to D. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB by side, side, side. Last is our proof here. We have parallel sides. So when you have parallel sides, you're supposed to think about one of the four tri or four angles, alternate interior, alternate exterior, corresponding or consecutive interior. We have the zigzag showing us that alternate interior angles would be congruent. And then we have a pair of sides the same, and we have the reflexive the same. So side, angle, side. We made our plan. Now we're ready to do the proof. So the parallel sides come from the given. We have our angles ABC and DCB. They're congruent because if... parallel sides then alternate interior angles congruent we have the other bit of given information the a b and the c d we have the reflexive property. I would really call this BC because we're going from the non-marker to the one, and the non-marker to the one. They could be switched, but reflexive POC tells us the sides are the same. So the triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, Congruence. Remember, the answers are on the back of this sheet also.